This is the fleet of John Mungai. He says he was driving in a taxi cab that he leases, and the defendants crashed into him. He's been chasing after these bums for almost two years now. They've been trying to dodge him on today's judgment day because he's finally got them in court and is suing them for the $5,236 he's owed. These are the defendants, Kendra Rosiak and Devin Price. Kendra says the plaintiff crashed into them when they slowed down to make a turn. Now, two years later, he's making up all these stories because he's trying to scam them out of money. He's now claiming he was hurt, but the medical records he showed them look made up because they're full of misspelled words. Oh, him? Ha! They're accused of dodging a cabbie. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff was driving a taxi when the defendants crashed into them and haven't paid in two years. But the defendants say the plaintiff crashed into them and is lying about his injuries. It's the case of taxi cab confession. Thank you. John Mungai, is that how you pronounce it? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, apparently, you got into an accident with Kendra and Devin, Kendra Rosiak and Devin Price? Yes, Your Honor. And it was quite some time ago. When was that? It was actually two years ago on May 5th. Who was driving? I was. Uh, whose car was it? It was my car. Why was he driving? He was driving because we had left the club and I was more than intoxicated to drive. Okay. Um, so how does the accident happen? I was going back to downtown Cleveland. It was uh, May 6th, early in the morning, one in the morning. And I approached the traffic light I had the green light to go ahead, and to my left, I knew there was a car waiting there uh -huh. to turn left. That was going opposite direction, but they wanted to turn in front. Right. So when I went through the light, I knew that car was still there. And uh, the next thing I knew was I, I crashed to another car that I didn't know. Where, where did it that came car from. even come from? I didn't know at what the time. What were you guys doing? Uh, we were going to left, and then he was coming straight towards right. us. Right, so you're turning into where he's already traveling, right? Yes, who's got the right of way? He did. Right, so whose fault is the accident? It's my fault. Right, okay. So what happens? Everybody gets out of their car. Was anyone injured? Um, go ahead. No, Your Honor, no one was injured. We made sure of that before, before driving away. Before you fled? Away. Yeah. Because you guys fled. Right? Yes. You left the scene of an accident. <laughs> Why? Um, I was nervous, to be honest. I can't hear you. I said I was nervous, to be honest. What were you nervous about? Were you driving intoxicated too, just less intoxicated than she was? No, Your Honor. I was not what intoxicated. What were you nervous about then? I just have never been in an accident. Right, but the only, the, how does it make it better to flee? Now it's a criminal case instead of just a, an accident that can happen to anybody. When you flee, that leads me to believe that it's better for you to flee than to stay, right? So why would you flee? Did you flee too? I was the passenger in the car. Yeah, you fled in the car or did you stay there? No. And I say, no, you can run, but leave my car and me here. Yeah, that didn't happen, right? No. Why yeah. would you guys do that? Yeah, How old are you? I, I am 25. How old are you? I'm 25 as well. So what happens? They in, flee and you call the police. Yeah, actually I called police before they left. Right. And he approached me, he said, look, I will give you $500 and the witness $500 so that I don't have to wait for police. The and witness? I, what witness? There, there was a... Uh, a the, third car? Yeah, before so, he... Before wait, wait, he, so okay. he, he was trying to bribe the witness? Yes, yes. Okay. Because before he turned left, there was another car in front so of him. So that car's a witness? Yes, he was taping everything. He has a video camera. A GoPro camera. and yeah, taping he, everything? Yes, yes. So did you offer the witness 500 bucks? Oh, um, okay. No, I didn't offer the witness five. Did you offer him five hundred bucks? To... I didn't offer him no a certain amount, but I did offer him money. There What'd wasn't you say? a specific amount. What exactly? What I did told you say? him that I would give him money. I'll I give said, you money if what? If he didn't call the police. Okay. Why didn't you want him to call the police? Because I didn't want to get in no trouble for okay, the hit. Okay. Now right? apparently you had no insurance, right? I did not at right. the time of the accident. No. Right. So you would have gotten a ticket for driving without insurance. You would have gotten a ticket for uh, failure to yield, yield right away, which you ended up getting eventually. And this is my favorite part of the story, how long it took. And then you could very well have been charged with leaving the scene of an accident. 
right? Because that, and that's a criminal offense. So what happens? No. GoPro man, the yeah. witness, hands the police the tape from the GoPro. Yes. Two years. Two years ago. Oh yeah, no, he did. I know this. And that's the witness. The witness had a GoPro on his dash. So the police have the tape. Where are you from? Cleveland, Ohio. Police have the tape from the date of the accident, May 6, 2017, until when do you finally hear from them? We found out December 18th of last year. So they have it for a year and a half before they look at it. And their answer for why is what? We're busy? You only have one detective for hit and skip in the cliff line. I don't care if they have yeah. one detective. He's oh. got an eight hour day for a year and a half. Well, they were behind like a year and a half. How, oh, that's crazy. I mean, that's insanity. How many cases do they have with a hit and run where there's an actual video of it? I don't know. Maybe yeah, I'm pretty sure not that many. Not that I mean, many. that's insanity. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. And it could, you guys are kind of shocked that this is all surfacing all this time later. I don't know why. You have no right to be shocked because you fled. And so people had to catch you. And you're surprised and insulted. Why didn't they catch me sooner? OK, this is why. All right? Now, let's discuss your lawsuit. You didn't end up having to pay for the damages to the car, correct? Because that is a leased car, and I guess the people you lease it from, their insurance paid for that? No, there was a misunderstanding there. Actually, I'm responsible for paying for damages. But in this case, they were paid by the uninsured motorist fund by the state of uh, Ohio. OK, so you are not out money for the repair of the car? No. no OK, no. so what you've come to court to sue for is $1,500 in pain and suffering and $2,200 in lost wages, plus the amount you had to pay for uh, the car because you couldn't stop leasing the car. You were in the middle of a lease agreement. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Do you have any paperwork to prove the lease agreement and its term and the fact that you had to keep renting it? No, that's one about the taxi business. It's no black and white. It's right. where you go. You agree how much you're going to be paying and when to be paid. They don't have all this paperwork. I don't know why. The only paper I had is just to show yeah, the, the base a week. Which was the okay, so that paperwork insurance. in particular covers a particular week, right? So is there paperwork for each week? No, no and because it was monthly, it's just like a mortgage, how you take a 10 years mortgage, right, but there except is for that, payment. Okay, but now I need you yeah. to listen to me. How are you going to prove to me that you didn't work for four weeks? That's part of what, a big part of what you're suing for is I lost wages for four weeks. How are you going to prove to me what your wages are and that you lost them for those four weeks? Well, to go the first thing, whether I want is, I couldn't even go drive that car to downtown because it was damaged. Otherwise, that car was. So then, what you're saying is your car was out of service? Yes, it was damaged. Okay, so it's okay. not that you couldn't work because you didn't feel well, it's that you couldn't work because there was no car? Okay, so then that's even easier to prove. Then you can show me how long the repair place took to fix the car. Do you have the repair? Paperwork? I, well, the repair was done by the company because I could not. It doesn't I, matter. Do you have the repair paperwork no, so I no, can see how long? No. Okay. No. So you're also suing for pain and suffering. Tell yes. me about that. Well, I, I the the doctor instructions. After, can I see that? Let me see every piece of paper you have from the hospital. Okay. Now you guys thought the paperwork was fraudulent. Why? Okay, there are a few misspellings on there, okay. and okay. also. The nurse had wrote on the bottom that he had took yeah. Percocet from his friend Weird. for his pain. But I know that's illegal to take other people's medication. You just can't do that. And I don't think the nurses are writing that on his Why hospital not? Papers. Why wouldn't a nurse write that if that's what he said? It's important to his medical diagnosis that he's on Percocet. <clears throat> but isn't that illegal? It's, it was yeah, his Yeah, but friends. what does that have to do with whether he's on Percocet? If, you're, if I'm in pain and someone has a Percocet, I may take the Percocet. I'm, you know, I'm, that, that's not your business. Your yeah, business yeah. is you hit a guy, he got in pain, and you fled, hoping nobody had you on tape, which makes you a terrible person. OK? You see what I'm saying? So it's really not your business that he didn't have the money to get Percocet prescribed to him directly and pay for the Percocet. And he had a friend who he borrowed Percocet from. I don't think that if I were in your position, I'd be hinging my hat on that. Okay.
Somebody flees the scene of an accident. Should they go to jail? Yes. Why? Because. What, should they go to jail? Yes. Why? Because they flee the scene. No one knows who they are. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Everybody wants to throw them in jail, but they won't say why. Going inside the courtroom. Did you end up at a chiropractor? They recommended that you go to a chiropractor. I went to once, and then after they told me how much cost it was, and I didn't have insurance, I didn't proceed. I just continued taking uh, the So how did you end up getting better? It took, Time? Me, it took me a while to get okay. it. What were you going to say in answer to my question? We just have a picture of the car, and I'm just a little confused with the pain and suffering. Cause, because well, my, my bailiff will get it for me. That's literally a... It's not that bad. Like, that was the only damage that was done. Have you ever been in a car accident before, or was this yes. your first? Is this your car? That's mine. Right. That's what the back of my car. What was the damage to his car? Do you have a picture of that, of the damage mm -hmm. to his car? You didn't no. stick around for that. That's All right. Fine. Did um, Do you have a picture of the damage to your car? No, I did have. What kind of car were you in? It was a Dodge, Dodge fan. One time I, I was in an accident. I was in a Honda van. And it was my fault. And I hit the Mercedes that was in front of me. It was right in front of the courthouse that I was the judge at. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the lady was fine. Her Mercedes had a scratch on it, and the entire front end of my Honda was in. But she, you know, she was she was fine. Everything depends. I don't think you're in a position to say someone's lying about their pain and suffering because look, this is the only damage to my car. You have no idea what you inflicted on the other person, which was what makes you such miserable people to just leave him to be out there to wait for the police alone, you know, and just leave because you're so selfish and you were only thinking about yourself. Uh, I don't think I'm going to listen to you tell me about whether or not he was in pain when I know that before anybody even caught you, he's telling the nurse that he's in such pain that ibuprofen doesn't help and he had to borrow a friend's Percocet. Um, I think that's a better indication of the kind of pain he was in than what you're saying. Do you have anything else to show me? No, you okay. Aren't. I have some concerns about your proof in the case because um, you know you don't have a lot to show me to prove the things that you're saying. You don't have, and I understand that sometimes it's just the way the industry works. I get that, but it, you know, at a minimum, the person who you lease it from could testify to me that it was in the shop for X weeks. He could write an affidavit that says that. You could show me the paperwork from the place that says that. You could. There's so much you could do to show me that you were out of work for that amount of time. It, it's ironic because I think what happened is because the police took so darn long, it's really hard for you to build your case. Did the police ask you if you wanted them arrested? Yeah, they, they, wanted, they wanted me to prosecute them criminally. Why didn't you? Because I called him in January and asked him to work with me. And then later on, he had his father call me, say I'm harassing them. And then they this asked me. This is why no good deed goes unpunished. These are the same people who fled the scene. Why would you cut them another break? You know what they care about themselves? It, it never ceases to amaze me how no good deed goes unpunished. Wait, wait, wait I talked to Ken. Yeah, you, you know what? We're good. I don't need to hear anything else. I, I am. I am more mad at them for fleeing and then having no soul at this trial than I am at you for not having paperwork. But I can't ignore that you're missing a lot of paperwork. So I'm not going to give you the amount that you are asking for uh, on your lost wages, but I am going to order the defendants to pay you $2,000 in pain and suffering. That's my verdict. So the defendants are on their way out of the courtroom with a judgment of $2,000 on their head. If I were you, I'd feel a little embarrassed right now. How do you feel? Really embarrassed. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm really not surprised. How about you? Yeah, very embarrassed. I mean, why didn't... Yeah. You know, obviously, you didn't do anything to help him out financially. So I guess the best thing to say is you better be careful. Yeah. You live and you learn. Yeah. Live and learn. It's tough. All yeah. right. Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Mungai? Yes. What do you think about what the judge just said to you? Well, I, I didn't get everything I wanted, but uh, I can understand how I made some mistakes in dealing in, with in that. not having the paperwork. Yeah, yes. 
Yes. Good luck to you. Thank okay. you. Sorry Thank you didn't get everything you wanted. I good luck sad. to you. Thank you. Okay. Doug, you know, when people sue for pain and suffering, the trick to this, keep a diary day by day of everything you're feeling. That diary is invaluable in court.